The F-35 versus the Chinese J-35. It's essentially like dad is meeting a son that was created based off of the exact plans of him. And they're like looking in a mirror and they're like, wait, is that me? Wait, who, wait, who? Who, who was first? Obviously the F-35 was first and the J-35 was taken from F-35 plans that were received by China through their spy network and they were able to get their hands on the actual blueprints of the F-35. So how would these jets dogfight each other? Being extremely similar, this might be one of the closest matchups of any peer-to-peer -peer nation on the planet Today. And in this video, I'm going to put you in the cockpit of the F-35 and the J-35 and we'll talk about who would win in a head-to-head -head dogfight. Here we go. So first off, the J-35 is the naval variant of the J-31. And it's an aircraft established by the People's Liberation Army Air Force that was designed to be a fifth generation fighter. Now, is it actually a fifth generation fighter? Well, not exactly. I would call it more of like a 4.5 generation fighter just due to the fact that the characteristics and the stealth coatings that are used on the J-35 just aren't quite up to the same level as the F-22 and the F-35. Now, the stealth of the J-35 is far beyond the J-17 or any of the other aircraft that China operates probably besides the J-20. The J-20 might be a little bit better than the J-35, but the big downside of the J-35 are its engines. Its engines just aren't stealthy. They aren't designed to avoid radar detection, which means that you're gonna be able to see this thing from a relatively far away distance. However, China's made the J-35 to be able to operate off of an aircraft carrier because of their focus on the South China Sea and being able to operate and do whatever they want in that area, like establish different islands, keep control of shipping lanes, because at the end of the day, China really wants to be able to do whatever they want in the South China Sea. And they want an aircraft that can go up potentially against the F-35, which is operating off of carriers in that same region. But they also want an aircraft that can go head to head with any fourth generation fighter, like the F-18 or the F-16 or F-15C. At the end of the day, China wants to be able to go head to head with those first off with the J-35, but then potentially be able to go head to head with the F-35 as well. When it comes to the J-35, they're able to carry over 15,000 pounds of armament. They're definitely focused on a multi-role mission and being a carrier-based aircraft. Now, when you put this thing on a carrier, the amount of armament that it's gonna be able to carry is gonna go way down. But the fact that it has two engines as opposed to the F-35's one engine just shows that China really wants this thing to be dependable on a carrier. China's not exactly confident enough that one of these engines would be enough to keep the J-35 from just dumping itself into the ocean every couple flights. So not only would the engine be underpowered if it had one, it would not be reliable enough to allow them to put the amount of money that they're putting into it and lose as many as they would with one of their engines. It's also been said that the J-35 has an infrared search and track, which is meant to detect heat signature from fighter jets and even helicopters. And you can see as the J-35 variant has continued to evolve, it looks like some of the coatings on the outside of the aircraft have actually become more stealthy. Recently, high resolution photos of this aircraft have been released and China's very closed-lipped and they hold these photos very closely to their chest so the fact that we're actually seeing them in the Western media is pretty much due to the fact that China wants the US to see it and they want the US to feel like there is a competitor to the F-35 in the South China Sea but is there actually a competitor let's talk a little bit about the F-35 so the F-35 essentially the the father of the J-35 since the plans were created from the F-35 for the J-35. But the big advantage that the F-35 is going to have is going to come to its sensor suite. The fact that the F-35 does not have a heads-up display, the J-35 does have a heads-up display because the integration of the sensors and the helmet in the F-35 is so 
far superior. So the F-35 has an incredible situational awareness suite for the pilot. It's essentially like a command and control behemoth that creates capabilities in network-centric warfare that just isn't found in any other fighter jet on the planet. And network-centric warfare essentially means the integration and the ability for different sensors to talk and integrate with each other that has never been done before. Those different sensors include a helmet that the pilot wears that gives them essentially 360 degree situational awareness. And that's tied into a Northrop Grumman APG-81 actively electronically scanned ASA radar. This thing's just a beast. And when I look at pictures of the APG-81, literally just makes me happy inside because as a fighter pilot, I know how much juice and how much advantage that radar is gonna give me in the battle space. And then that's going to integrate with an ASQ-239 Barracuda electronic warfare system, a Northrop Grumman Raytheon AAQ-37 electro-optical distributed aperture system, a Lockheed Martin AAQ-40 electro-optical targeting system, and a Northrop Grumman ASQ-242 communications navigation navigation and identification suite. So the fact that all these different sensors can talk to each other is essentially like you're playing a video game on God mode and you have so much situational awareness coming to you from so many high fidelity sources that being surprised on the battlefield and not knowing what's going on is essentially moved to a zero probability. Now it's not exactly zero, we'll call it 0.1, but at the end of the day, you having all these different things is having the most advantage that any fighter jet on the planet has. So not only does the F-35 have the network-centric warfare, but it's also got an amazing stealth capability. The radar cross sections of it are obviously classified, but you can bet that this thing probably looks like a metal golf ball. That's the size that it would look like on a radar screen. So it is not detectable from most radars in modern day fighter jets. So this is gonna give it a decisive advantage in any beyond visual range scenario. All right, so here we go. We're in the South China Sea. You've got a J-35 going up against an F-35. This is the moment you've been waiting for. The J-35 pilot is gonna try to detect the F-35 as soon as possible using ground-based radars and other sensors on the J-35. They're also gonna have PL-12s or PL-14s, which are probably gonna have a longer range as far as rocket motor burnout than an AMRAAM, and they know that. So they're gonna try to shoot that thing as fast as they possibly can. Most likely, they're not gonna be able to see the F-35. The F-35 is gonna be roaming around undetected and it's gonna have first launch opportunity on the J-35. The F-35 is gonna operate in a multi-ship formation, so you never know where they're gonna be. And the reliability of the F-35 is so much better than the J-35 that it's gonna be able to wail away on a small formation of J-35s combined with J-17s or J-11s or whatever else might be up there in a way that those aircraft are not gonna to know what hit them. Missiles are essentially gonna rain down upon them. So let's say they get to the merge for whatever the reason. This is where there is going to be a similar capability, probably the most similar out of any of the fifth generation fighters. These aircraft are gonna turn and burn in a relatively similar fashion. Now the F-35 is gonna be a bit smaller than the J-35, which means it's going to have a higher thrust to weight ratio with an engine producing more thrust, pushing a smaller airframe. So it's gonna be able to outrate the J-35 and essentially put itself in a position to be offensive, much better than the J-35 would be able to do. Also, the high alpha, the high AOA maneuvering of the F-35, where it can kind of stand itself on its burner cans and still move the aircraft, is gonna be far advanced to the J-35, since the J-35 engines are gonna be much more underpowered than the F-35 single engine configuration because the J-35 is heavier, longer, and it's just, and those two engines are just gonna be pushing a lot more weight than what the F-35 single engine is gonna be doing. So for my money, I'd much rather 
be in the F-35, essentially due to that network-centric warfare where you just have the ability to reach out and touch something and say, oh yeah, I shot you. Oh yeah, I shot you. Yeah, I shot you like 20 minutes ago. No big deal. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It just helps me grow this channel a ton, and I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much for being here. We'll catch you on one of these videos over here. Have a great day.